Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and today is Friday, which normally would be a developer Q&A video. However, I think the developers are on some kind of holiday in China. I'm not entirely certain what that is. I'm not clued up on my Asian holidays, sadly. Um, but ultimately there is no dev Q&A today. I've asked for one, I've not been sent one. So we are going back to plan B. And like pretty much everything else in Eve Echoes, the B in plan B stands for battleships. Oh yeah, we're going to be talking about battleships again today, but in a slightly more positive way, I think, or at least in a much more neutral way than my usual battleship discourse would go. You see, today being Friday doesn't just mean dev Q&A, it also means that the latest season pass, the latest Concord pass, has just launched and with it new nano cores for the faction battleships. And I often get people ask me, Benzi, which one of these is better? Is it worth me going for this core or should I go for that core? Should I save up my points and go for something completely different? So we're going to be having a look at the new faction battleship nano cores and seeing if they're actually worth it or if you should just go for something else. You'll see. Anyway, so if you enjoy this video, please let me know. Hit like on it. Let me know in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. There are some of you still watching this that are not subscribed according to my analytics. So please tap that subscribe button. Ding the bell for notifications. You never miss an upload. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support my channel and keep me doing what I do, making content like this, head across to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzie. Every pledge and dollar really means the world to me and helps keep this channel going. Anyway, that said and done, let's jump right into talking about the new faction battleship nano cores. I believe these are called trailblazer cores. So let's have a look and see how these stand up. Now, of course, you can go in via the Concord Pass, or we can go in via the store. We go into Exchange Store and then the Concord Pass Shop. And here now, in the very top right, we have a new box, the Faction Battleship Trailblazer Opt Supply. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the Trailblazer core. And the first thing I will say about it is I do actually quite like the look of this. I think it's an unusual color scheme. I quite like the red detailing on it, at least that sort of rusty, deep claret. Um, it's an interesting core, like visually. I think there have been far worse ones out there. This one to me is it's pretty understated, but I actually quite like it. Of course, though, we're not here to talk about visuals. We're here to talk about the stats. And I'm going to blitz through these fairly quickly. And we're going to be taking a look at this compared to the other faction battleship opt crate that you can go in for at the moment, which is right the way down here. You can see I've sold out on it. This is the Ascension core. And the Ascension one is one of those that's a little bit like, oh, I'm not so sure. It's very, very orange. Um, I mean, crikey, look at that. Look at that, it's just a gigantic orange battleship that really has no detail or anything at all to it, which is why I quite like the look of the new Trailblazer core. It's a bit more understated. And let's talk about the Rattlesnake one first off, because obviously I'm flying a Rattlesnake these days. So let's have a look at this and how it compares. So looking at the core itself, our main attributes are 18% drone damage, 21% drone tracking speed, or a 21% reduction to inertia modifier. In basic terms, in sort of the stripped down nano core terms, it's 18% main weapon damage, 21% inertia modifier, or if we look at something like, say, the, uh, the Trailblazer for the Nightmare here, you can see it's then usually things like warp speed for the secondary slot. Um, yeah, there we are, warp speed at the top there. For some reason, the Rattlesnake just gets drone tracking speed rather than warp speed. I don't know why that's got that, whereas all the others are running on main weapon damage, warp speed, and inertia modifier. Ultimately, I'm not sure I really want to complain. It's weird again that the Macariel, it goes for shield, not warp speed, although I suppose the Macariel does get a 50% boost to its warp speed anyway, built in to its core. Um, armor and scan resolution on the Nesta, no main weapon damage there, which kind of makes sense. I suppose the scan resolution in inverted commas is its main weapon damage. If you have a use for the Nesta, please let me know. I've never seen one in the wild. Bar guest, yeah, back to warp speed. Anyway, so looking at the Rattlesnake, I had a look at this one and its 18% drone damage was exactly the same as the Ascension Core. The 21% drone tracking speed was kind of, mm, I'm not sure that's really worth it. Like considering how the tracking speed on drones is anyway, 21% of a small amount is not actually that much more. And it doesn't really make that much of a difference when you math it out. 
the inertia modifier is one that you might find useful on some of these battleships. Certainly, I feel if you're using, say, the Macariel or the Vindicator, then inertia modifier might actually be something you're interested in. That said, I'm pretty certain most people are gonna do the oh-so-obvious just go for straight DPS, or maybe survivability. The thing with the Rattlesnake Trailblazer is, I really wish that 21% had either been warp speed to help it warp a little bit faster, or they'd gone like the Nestor and made it armor. Well, not armor, shield. Shield like they have on the Ascension Core. To me, that would have been a more interesting spread of the stats, especially since a lot of people, myself included, often haven't necessarily taken the Gurustus and stacked DPS on them. You stack the shield to make it, because yeah, you're getting, a say, a 18% bonus, well, bonus to one of your two weapons systems, that's not as much as, say, putting 18% railgun damage on a Vindicator. Vindicator's damage comes purely from its railgun, so that's 18% of the full DPS that the ship is currently putting out, whereas the Rattlesnake, a good sort of close to 50-60% is drones, and 50-40%, depending on how you rig it and what your skills are like, is going to be missiles, so you're getting only 18% of 50% of your damage, and that's, it It doesn't actually work out as well, you know, you see, you watch like, uh, say, a Macariel, or a Bargorn, or any of these others, and you put one of these on there, and you go for the main weapon damage, you get a big buff to its damage, its overall DPS shoots up. Do this on the Rattlesnake, and you maybe get like 200 additional DPS DPS, it's not that much. Shield is something I would rather go for. Secondary stats, we're looking at warp speed, drone tracking speed, or shield booster, shield boost amount. That shield booster, shield boost amount is quite nice. Again, 8.7% warp speed. It's really not worth it, really. There's, uh, that's 8% on top of two astronomical units. So it's like, yeah, 2.16 warp speed. Wow! Yeah, don't bother with it. Either go for the drone tracking speed if you really want to stack that and try and, you know, get better application. I would probably go for the shield booster, shield boost amount on that one. Um, second stat down is drone flight velocity or drone shield. This is an interesting one. Drone flight velocity does help you keep up with targets. Drone shield is useful in PvP because it increases the already substantial EHP of the drones. I think most are going to go drone flight velocity on that. Third one, again, oh look, drone explosive damage. So it's not an 11% increase to your drone DPS, it's actually because it's only boosting up the explosive damage. Overall, you're looking at probably not that much of an increase at all, and it's only going to matter if you're using Minmatar drones. Like, if you put a Praetor and you have drone explosive damage, it's not adding any additional damage to that. It's an additional 11.2% of 0%. So, yeah, you're only getting that if you're using, say, Berserkers or Bouncers. Drone range, that's a bit of a better one. That's not drone command range, that's like their optimal range of the drone. So it's a bit of sort of application there. Or flight velocity, and again, flight velocity, wow, 10% additional speed on a ship that starts at 90 meters per second. However, will we slow this thing down? Don't bother, drone range, it's not great, but it's drone range is probably the one you're gonna go for. Inertia modifier, warp speed at the next level, again, 10.5% additional warp speed. Wow, your 2 AU becomes 2.2 AU. It's just, I don't get why they've put warp speed on a battleship nanocore. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Inertia modifier is the one you're going to go for there, and even then it's not really worth it. Drone tracking speed, drone thermal damage, which now only affects any of your... Uh, is it Galente or Kaldari that do kinetic? I don't honestly remember. It's Galente, isn't it? It's Galente do thermal damage. Um, so it's only going to affect Galente drones. Flight velocity or drone tracking speed. Application is the way forward there. And if you're stupid enough to go the full way down on this one, drone damage or shield. Either of those are actually pretty good. Shield is good for the Rattlesnake drone damage if you're leaning into it. Yeah, why not? Now, the Rattlesnake Trailblazer, the reason I wanted to come to this one first is because, once again, it shows that Netties don't understand how to work the Gurustus Pirates ships with their nano cores. These are just categorically worse than any other nano core out there because you're splitting your damage down the middle and then only buffing half of it. This needed to be much higher, and that's disappointing that they still continue to do this because the Crazy Hair or whatever it was called, that one that no one could get for the Rattlesnake, is a damn good 
core because it it did exactly that. It buffed up the drone damage significantly higher because it understood you could have a higher percentage of the drone damage on that particular ship because it's a smaller amount. Whereas, you know, a t an 18% boost on a Macariel is 18% to its 100% damage. So you're doing 118% damage. Whereas on a Rattlesnake, you're doing 18% boost to 50% of its damage. So it's like, uh, yeah, not. It's like a 59% boost. It's really not this as significant. It's it's tiny. It's tiny by comparison. Ultimately, between the Rattlesnake Trailblazer or the Rattlesnake of the, where are we, right down the bottom, Faction Battleship, or the Ascension, it's going to be the Ascension on this one pretty much hands down because you can go for that shield early on if you want to tank it. The drone damage is the same, but all of the subs are just so much better. Drone tracking speed, range or warp speed, capacitor or drone damage. Of course, you're going to go drone damage on that one pretty much. Rattlesnake doesn't suffer for capacitor. Shield boost the shield boost amount or shield. Those are really nice for the, uh, for the Rattlesnake. Warp drive capacitor or afterburner capacitor. Nah, go for the shield boost capacitor need of anything because you shouldn't really be propping a Rattlesnake. Afterburner. Warp speed or drone damage. Again, you've got drone damage as an option there. Drone damage and drone range at the end. The Ascension Core compared to the Trailblazer, it is just so much better for the Rattlesnake. Like, there's no two ways about it. The other one to look at, though, I think is we'll have a look at the Macariel next because this is the other one that I do fly a fair amount. Let's compare these side by side. Again, 18% damage, 22.5% shield. Does annoy me again that the Macariel, they always push you for shield on this, yet there is nothing in its stats that suggests shield. In fact, there are some really good uses and really like strong cases for armor tanking a Macariel. It does really well at it. If we look at its stats, the secondary cannon tracking speed is okay. Shield booster, shield boost amount is pretty cool. We get warp speed on a Macariel. That does actually do a decent amount. Damage control activation time or shield booster capacitor need. I'd probably go shield booster capacitor need, but it's nice to see the, uh, the damage control activation there on it. Flight velocity, explosive damage, or thermal damage. Now, this is much better than on the drones because you're always going to be using cannons that are dealing some kind of explosive or thermal damage. So going for those is going to be actually really useful. I would personally go for the thermal because it tends to hit more resist holes, but it does tend to be you no know, matter what you're shooting at. If you're shooting at stuff with shields, thermal damage is going to be better. If you're shooting at stuff with armor, the explosive is still going to be better than the thermal, even if they've rigged to reduce that. Um, we then have, that's the same one, damage control activation time again, which you can really stack up quite high with this, which is pretty cool. It's only a couple of extra seconds, but in PvP, that could make all the difference if you're fitting a DCU, which I don't see many people actually doing on the Macariel. Inertia modifier is probably what I'd go for here. Make a speedy battleship even more. Oh, look, more explosive and thermal damage and flight velocity, followed by cannon damage and shield. The Trailblazer core here is actually pretty good on the Macariel. How does that stack up compared to the Ascension Core. Let's have a look then. The Macariel Ascension Core. Oh look, exactly the same at the top there. Tracking speed, cannon range or warp speed. We got damage on the other side, so you might want to go for the Trailblazer there. Capacitor or cannon damage. Oh, there's the damage, whereas this was shield booster amount. Um, shield or shield booster amount. Warp drive capacitor, shield capacitor or afterburner capacitor. Ultimately, this is a bit more tricky. This is a trickier one to decide should you go for the Ascension or should you go for the Trailblazer. I think looking at it, I would probably personally still go for the Ascension because it's more straight up damage, um, less of the tank. But if you want a bit more of a tanky Macariel, and as long as you're doing that with shields, then the Trailblazer is not a bad option. I just personally think the Ascension one is going to be better. Now, there are a couple I can still comment on here. I'm not going to comment on the Nightmare or the Balgorn because I don't fly them. The Vindicator I've flown a lot as well, so let's have a look at this one. Nesta we won't touch on, and the Bar Guest I will have a brief look at. So the Vindicator Trailblazer. 18% Railgun damage, 21% Warp Speed. For this one, it's probably going to be that Railgun damage, isn't it? Because the Vindicator has already got pretty good um, in the ways of like uh, application and stuff like that. So the Inertia Modifier, uh, maybe, to help you move around. Warp Speed, again, I'm not sure you'd ever really go for that. Tracking Speed, Capacitor Need or Flight Velocity. Tracking Speed, again, could be quite a nice one on here. The Snub-Nosed Railguns do have decent tracking speed to start with, so an 8.7% boost to that is pretty sizable. Capacitor or Stasis Webifier range, oh boy, you better know you're going for that web range, right? 
flight velocity, kinetic or thermal damage. Again, it's annoying that it's a split, but it does give you an option of which of the two middles you go for. Um, and again, that can be really useful for punching through resist holes. Again, it's just annoying that normally if it's like railgun damage, it's a 10.8, whereas it's only 11.2 when they're splitting the damage. Netties, when you are splitting damage like this, you need to massively increase the actual damage, otherwise the standard DPS ones are going to be better. Inertia modifier or warp disruptor optimal range. Yeah, you know everyone's going for warp disruptor optimal range on that one. Kinetic damage, thermal damage, or flight velocity. Again, split DPS. Even 12.8 is not enough over a standard 10.8 DPS damage increase. Armor or railgun damage at the bottom there. That's very similar to the ascension core for the Vindicator. Let's go in and have a look there. Railgun damage, armor, flight velocity, better spread there because you're never going to use that warp speed. Tracking speed, railgun range or warp speed, tracking speed's pretty good. Railgun damage, 7.8% there. Okay, so actually it is a little bit lower. I might be getting my stats confused. At which point, yeah, if, if it's 11 point or 12 point, you know, damage on thermal or kinetic compared to just an 8%, 7.8% uh, damage on railgun, that may actually break even may break even because you've got two points that's uh, you're looking at basically an eight percent increase on half your damage or a 12 percent increase on the full damage no eight percent increase on full damage or 12 percent increase on half damage no the eight still wins the eight still actually wins out on that mathematically um so yeah this is what i'm saying ultimately we've got a case here where the ascension core is going to be better for its damage the rest of it though it's it's pretty meh I don't know. I don't know. For me, I would still go for the Ascension Core, even here. I just don't see the point in the Trailblazer Core at this point in time. Last one, then. Let's have a look at the Bar Guest. There we go. Missile Torpedo Damage, Warp Speed or Inertia. Missile Torpedo all the way. Maybe Inertia Modifier if you're going for kiting and you need to be able to change direction quickly, but the Bar Guest is not a particularly nimble ship. Not sure that's going to do much. We do have Explosion Velocity here, which is amazing. Explosion Velocity is the number one, like, letdown stat on missiles at the moment. I've shown that in other videos in the past. I've run the math on that. Explosion Velocity is the application stat on missiles that is going to screw you over most of the time. So the fact that it's on here is really, really good. Flight Velocity or Capacitor, probably the little bit of extra range there could be nice, or Capacitor to keep you going. Not bad either way. Oh, look, Split Damage. Warp Disruptor Optimal Range, yeah, again, probably going to be useful because if you're going for a kiting bar guest. Um, yeah, who really does a kiting bar guest? It's a PvE ship, let's be fair, it's a PvE ship. Only people are really using this for PvE. Missile Torpedo Thermal Damage, more split damage, Shield Booster Shield Amount is where I would go for there. And then Torpedo Damage or Warp Scrambler, Warp Jammer Strength, that's actually quite nice there. That last one, if you can get the bar guest all the way down, it becomes an absolute beast at tackling. Like, you, you use a four-point scram, and it's now a seven-point scram. Even your standard disruptors at two points become five points each. That's pretty beasty, and probably what a lot of people would go for if they could be bothered to max out a purple nanocore. Comparing that to the Ascension Core then, let's jump down and have a look at this one. This one side by side, again we've got Shield as an option there, which is probably a pretty good option for the Bar Guest, considering it has Shield Tank for days, giving it an additional 22.5% on top of that is going to make it tanky as all hell. We do still get that all-important Explosion Velocity. If you're listening to this, that is the one you are going to want to go for, no matter what you think. That is the one you're going to want to go for. Getting explosion velocity down on your missiles is absolutely vital. More damage there, and it's not split, so it works out better. Shield booster, shield boost amount is quite nice, or flat shield. Mm, afterburner or warp drive capacitor need. Warp drive capacitor need's quite nice on this, because it's, again, if you're going for that PvP kiting fit with the bar guest, um, you want that micro warp drive to be running at all times, but shield booster capacitor need's pretty good if you're the PvE -er using this. Afterburner speed increase, warp drive speed increase, those are also really, really nice. I get the feeling that most people here would just go for missile or torpedo damage, but those speed increases can be really, really powerful. Finally, missile flight velocity or torpedo damage. You're going to go for the torpedo damage here. Like, let's be completely honest. There's no real choice to it. That means that at the bottom line here, 
I would say the Ascension Core beats out on the bar guest as well. Which begs the question, what really is the point in these Trailblazer cores? Now look, I've, I've said before, I don't think that nano cores should be power creeping. I think that that would be a really bad thing. That, oh, you bought this core. Well, next month we're releasing one that's even better. That's terrible. But if you're going to have a nano core that uses optionally secondary stats, something that does something a little bit differently, you need to make sure that those secondary stats you're offering are actually freaking useful. Because warp speed on an, on a battleship just really ain't that useful, and that's basically what the Trailblazers are aiming for. They're doing this whole thing of, oh, your ship can be faster. Bro, I'm flying a battleship. Speed ain't on my agenda here. This isn't something you worry about with a battleship. And then when you split the damage in half, that can be a really interesting decision to make. Unless the other nanocore just has flat damage that works out better. The way I look at it is that if you've got, say, railguns, and those are doing two types of damage, thermal and kinetic, and someone can offer you a 10% increase on your total damage, that's 10% to your thermal damage and 10% to your kinetic damage, right? So, if you want to then give me one that's a split, it needs to be at least 20%. Otherwise, the, 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 the not split is just going to be better. If it's a case between 10% um, damage overall, 10% railgun damage, or 20% thermal damage, suddenly that's a decision. That actually makes sense, and that gives you something to really think about. If it's a 10% damage boost or a 15% thermal boost, there's no point, because the 10% damage boost includes most of that thermal boost and all of the kinetic as well, and it just works out better. It's it's a disappointment. I kind of look at these and I see what they were trying to do, but it, it really feels, and I'm trying not to put this kind of stuff in content at the moment, it really feels like netties are just kind of throwing stuff out there on this. It really does. It doesn't feel like anyone sat down and said, what would be an interesting nano core for battleships? They kind of just went, okay, let's pick a stat and throw that on there. And they went with speed. And it's just, why? Why would you do that? Like, give us some meaningful decisions. These aren't meaningful decisions, they're just bad decisions. And it's it's kind of disappointing, because I like the Rattlesnake Trailblazer Core, I like the look of it, I wouldn't have minded fitting that to my ship. But, oh, would you look at that? I'm clearly flying a Rattlesnake with an Ascension Core. I went and bought the Ascension Core this morning, I compared the Trailblazer and the Ascension, and the Ascension is just so much better across the board. And again, I get that maybe having something that's different and not necessarily as good as a previous core makes sense. I mean, if you're flying an Apocalypse Striker, the Thermomagnetic Storm 2 core is considered one of the best. You can't get it anymore, so you kind of have to make do with a worse off nano core like the Ascension or the Trailblazer or whatever like that. And there is a Trailblazer for the Apocalypse Striker. It's not terrible. It's not terrible, and it's probably your best option right now, but... The simple fact is, I can buy the Ascension or I can buy the Trailblazer, they've got both in the store. Why the hell would I ever buy the Trailblazer when the Ascension is just flat out better? Everything it does, it does better, and it does more things that are actually relevant. Now, I am going to end this off with one sort of going forward message here. I'm going to jump in on the Rattlesnake, and apologies for the dogs going crazy in the background, they like doing that when I'm recording. We're going to go into the different attributes here on the Rattlesnake, and I'm going to pull up the one whose name I can never remember, the Hair Calamity Core, and let's have a look at its detailed info. This is a split nano core done right. 30% drone damage, whereas the others were like 20% of their weapon system, because they know it's only 50% of the actual the actual ship's damage. It can take that bigger boost. It can have a 20% on a Macariel and a 30% drone on a Rattlesnake, and that's going to still work out actually slightly lower of a, of a boost to the Rattlesnake, but it's better than giving it just 20%. The shield, the flight velocity, interesting options. I'd never go for flight velocity on a Rattlesnake, but hey, there we go. Oh look, everything here is relevant. Everything here is relevant. Everything here is relevant. And okay, you can sit and say, but hang on, Benzie, that's split damage. Yeah, it is, but it's deep down on a nano core. It's still 11.2, and with so much more above it that are doing additional damage and things like that, that it kind of works out. This was a nano core done right in the sense of its stats. I mean, look there, you've got 17% drone damage right at the bottom there. That's a huge boost, and that's the kind of size that it needs to be, unlike this that's just not particularly exciting there, but it's still better than any of the alternatives. The trouble with the Hair Calamity Core is it's impossible to get. 
they made these super rare, handed them out to a very select group of people, and yeah, none of us are ever going to get these. That is the best nano core for the Rattlesnake by a bleeding margin. Like, it's a long way off from the other cores. It does so much more, but it's impossible to get. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's amazing stats, but you're never going to fly it. And how much does that suck? I don't know. I don't know. I would like to see those cores make it back into the store. I know they were essentially prizes when they first came out, but screw it. Let the people who got them as prizes have them six months ahead of time. Now, start giving them to everyone else. Put them into a store. Give us a way to get these with in-game currency. I don't want to see those come back like we had Illusory Ghost and just, oh yeah, spend 150 bucks on a bloody nano core. No. Give players the tools they need to actually have fun in the game. If you're gonna make us, if you're gonna shove everyone into battleships, at least try and make it fun. Anyway, folks, that's been me looking at the Ascension Core and at the Trailblazer Core, comparing the two. My personal opinion is that in almost every situation, the Ascension Core still beats out the Trailblazer, but you may disagree. Let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you all in New Eden.